Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. And this is the PN organ. It's actually a modular virtual pipe organ, but it's built around a Hammond SK1 stage piano. So in this video I'm going to show you how I built this instrument. I'd previously worked on building a virtual pipe organ into a console and I thought about doing the same thing but the thing about a console is that it's very big and heavy. So I thought wouldn't it be great to build something that's modular that can be very easily taken apart, packed up and moved. So that's how this project began and as you can see that's exactly what this is. It's built out of various sub modules that are very easily packed up and moved yet it is a full virtual pipe organ plus also it has the capabilities of this Hammond SK1 stage keyboard. So you can see that it has this box up here which has got all the electronics for the virtual pipe organ in it and I'll show you that later on. And there's the, the Hammond SK1 so the Hammond does everything that the Hammond does. Hammond organ. And then the then I have this thumb piston rail and that works through the electronics. So if we come over to say this one, it also works with the stop action magnets as well. So uh, all of that, and of course they work you know, by hand as they should as well. Turn off those trumpets. And uh, down the bottom, I have a swell shoe. On the left is a foot switch, which is for switching the, the Leslie simulation on and off on the Hammond. And then there's the sustain pedal, which I use mainly for uh, piano. So this, as you can see, is a very capable instrument. I'm really, really happy with it. Incidentally, you'll notice that it doesn't have a pedal board. I do have a pedal board. I haven't hooked it up yet. I won't need any extra electronics. I just need to wire it in to the electronics that I already have. Um, but I haven't done that yet because I'm not really good enough, to be honest, to, to be able to make that much use of, of the pedal board. So I do have a pedal board sitting here. I just haven't wired it up. So do stick around as I show you how I built this modular virtual pipe organ. Okay, so first of all, what is the absolute minimum that you're going to need to be able to get your virtual pipe organ running? Well, firstly, so I'm using Hupvirk, which is basically the, the standard virtual pipe organ software. So you're gonna need the software to be running on a computer. So I just have it running on my MacBook Pro. Uh, there also is a Windows version as well. I'm running Hupdivirk 4, which is a few versions old now, but it does everything that I want, and I'm using the free version. So you need to have Hupdivirk running successfully on your computer, and there's plenty of other places where you can go to find out how to do that. Now, to be able to actually play Hupdivirk, you're going to need a keyboard. So you can play Hutzwerk with just one keyboard and basically you can use any keyboard you like as long as you can interface it to your computer because that's how when you press a note that your computer is going to know that you've pressed that note and Hutzwerk will make the organ sound. Most modern keyboards will have a USB output and you can just connect to the USB 
on your computer and it will play it quite happily that way. However, if you are wanting to build an actual proper virtual pipe organ like mine, then I would say that you don't want the USB outputs, you will want the MIDI outputs. Or at the very least, you're going to need MIDI outputs and inputs to be able to control the rest of the electronics. The electronics works through MIDI, so you'll see how that works later on. But so for me, this entire system works through MIDI, the keyboards work through MIDI. So you need to be able to interface your keyboard to Huptwerk and to get Huptwerk going all you need is a very very basic keyboard that doesn't generate any sounds in itself basically a MIDI controller and if it has a MIDI output you can interface it to your laptop just using one of these very cheap MIDI to USB converters I mean this using this you know I mean I've seen keyboards lying on the side of the street that people have thrown away um, so you can pick them up for basically nothing so you need a keyboard you need hump work and obviously you need noise as well so I'm presuming that if you have a computer then it has a way of making noise already you've probably got some speakers interfaced to it um, I have a slightly different setup which I'll show you later on but um, yeah so these this is the absolute minimum that you need is Huptwerk running with noise coming out of it and a keyboard single keyboard will work just fine to be able to control Huptwerk and you will be able to play virtual pipe organ and if you've got decent speakers it will sound pretty good now I want to talk now about this keyboard that I acquired I thought about doing what I had just talked about, but I've always had a bit of a fascination with uh, Hammond organs as well. And I thought to myself, well, if I can pick up myself a, a Hammond organ for not a, you know, Hammond keyboard that's got a mini out on it for not a huge amount of money, then I'll be able to play Hammond organ as well. And so I did a fair bit of research and um, had a look at kind of like the first like vintage um, digital kind of like Hammond keyboards like these from the early 90s and I discovered they were going for crazy money on, money on eBay absolutely crazy money for like a you know a 30 old 30 year old keyboard so I just kept looking around and this um, Hammond SK1 which only went end of life um, quite recently there's some of these still floating around basically new in box um, that haven't sold yet so this is a, a very recent stage piano that has only just been replaced by the Hammond XK Pro is a new model. So this is a, a lovely keyboard uh, that has all of the, the Hammond organ stuff built in it. It's got a bunch of other organs built into it. Um, it also has this extra voice function so it'll do keyboard, uh, it'll do a heap of other instruments and you can download instruments into it as well. And it can be hybrid so you can you can split the you can split the manuals so the bottom half will act as if it's the lower manual and the top half will act as if it's the top manual if you don't have uh, two manuals and I believe that it will actually send that through to Hotwork so I just can't recall that for sure but I believe if you do that Hotwork will believe that this is the lower manual and that this is the top manual so you can get two manuals that way but uh, also on this you can the the lower manual could be for example uh, Hammond organ and the upper manual can be uh, extra voice so this is a fantastic instrument in its own right and uh, so I was able to pick this up for what I thought was a very very reasonable price it's ex rental so it is used but it's in excellent condition it's only got a couple of little marks on it apart from that it's basically as new so um, this is the path that I chose to go down to go down you don't have to as I say any keyboard that is capable of generating uh, MIDI outputs to get into Huptwerk or via a USB cable work just fine this one is the the 73 key version if all you want to do is organ then you only need 61 keys 
being your standard number of keys for an organ manual. But because I was interested in getting into piano as well, I got the, the 73 key one. And even then, sometimes I run out. There is an 88 key version as well of this, um, the, the SK-188. But um, if you were thinking about getting into something as well as organ, then you might look at the 73 as an absolute minimum or the 88. So, so this is the, the keyboard controller that I'm using. But the main thing that you need to have, if we just come around and have a look at the back, is you need to have, you need MIDI out. That's the absolute minimum or a USB out. MIDI out, that's what you need to be able to go into Hauptwerk. Okay, so what I just showed you was an absolute minimum system for getting Hauptwerk running with just with a single MIDI controller, essentially. However, what if you are not using a MIDI controller, but you are using a fancier keyboard like I am with this Hammond SK-1? So the Hammond SK-1 doesn't have any speakers of its own, so we need to somehow uh, deal with the audio. We've got two audio sources. We've got Hupfwerk is coming out of the computer, and then we've got the sound that comes out of this Hammond keyboard. So how do we deal with that? So you need to use some sort of a device for mixing the audio. So I'm using this Focusrite. This is a Claret 2 Pre-USB. Uh, it's one of the higher end Focusrite products, but it is supposed to have a better audio quality. So in my system, this actually plays the role of three devices. So it acts as a USB interface. So I showed you before that cheap and cheerful cable. It's okay for just one keyboard. But for something a bit fancy, you want a proper USB interface. So this has got the uh, USB. There's USB in and out there as far as the computer is concerned. Um, this also has line out, so this effectively works as a stereo DAC. So now Hauptwerk is sending the sound that it generates not to the computer speakers, it's sending that sound to here. So the sound uh, from the organ is going through this Focusrite device. So basically what's happening now is when I press the keys, a MIDI signal is being sent to the computer, which is interpreted by Hauptwerk. Hauptwerk is then generating the sound through this Focusrite claret, and then that's going out of the line outs to the amplifier and to my stereo speakers. So that's all well and good. However, we've still got to deal somehow or other with the audio that comes out of this Hammond SK. So if I just turn the volume up and if I just turn the stops off from the organ so the organ's not sounding. So this focus right has two line ins. I think it might have more but it's two that I'm actually using. So I simply have the line out of the Hammond connected to the line ins on the focus right and it mixes. So this device is USB interface, it's audio interface, it's audio out and it's the mixer all in one. So this is really taking care of an awful lot of stuff all in the one box. So this is really the next stage of, of being able to at least make a hybrid instrument work. Um, you don't need this probably if it's just a MIDI controller as I showed you in the, the simple setup beforehand. But for a hybrid instrument where the keyboard is making its own noise as well, you've got to route that audio somehow and get it mixed in with the audio from the organ so that you have all of the audios going through to your speakers. Which, as you can see, we do.
Okay, so already we have a very capable instrument building up, but if one is really wanting to have a virtual pipe organ, then really you're going to want two manuals. So there are a couple of ways to go about that. The simplest and easiest way to do it would be to have two MIDI controllers. Uh, so option one going with the single MIDI controller instead of this Hammond, and then having a second identical MIDI controller. Now, for reasons I've already talked about, I didn't go down that path. I picked up this Hammond SK-1 that gives me this wonderful hybrid instrument. And I have here this uh, Keystation 61 Mark III, and it is a MIDI controller. Um, literally, it doesn't make any noise at all. It doesn't have a sound engine. It doesn't have audio out. All it generates is MIDI, and it's a fairly uh, simple MIDI controller. It has a... Um, it has a MIDI output, it doesn't even have a MIDI input, so you can't loop through. But it has a MIDI output, and it has a USB output. Um, so you could use either, either of those. Um, so this is a really nice keyboard, it's good value for money, I really like the, the touch of it. And so basically we have the MIDI out of this is looping, going to the MIDI in of the Hammond and that is going through to Hauptwerk. So we have on Hauptwerk, we have the, there's the lower manual and there's the upper one. But if I just uh, turn Hauptwerk off for a second and turn the volume up on the Hammond, so we, we have on the bottom, bottom one's currently set up for Hammond organ and the top one is set up for extra voice. So we have the split manuals, they're upper and manual, upper and lower manual working both for Hauptwerk and for the Hammond, which supports this second lower manual. So it gives us a huge amount of flexibility again in how this instrument can be played with one very important caveat, and that is this. This M Audio MIDI controller being fairly cost effective means that it doesn't have a huge amount of functionality. I discovered that um, it doesn't quite work the way that the manual is supposed says that it's supposed to, so changing MIDI channels was a real trial. It doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to want to change its MIDI channel. So you could run into a potential MIDI conflict, which would be rather disastrous. The other problem is is that it does not have it doesn't have key velocity mapping so that doesn't matter if all that you're doing is organ but as soon as you want to do something that has weighted touch especially something like a, a piano you run into a problem because basically what that means is if you if you press a key with a certain amount of force then that will translate to a certain amount of volume that comes out. So the Hammond generally needs to be played reasonably heavier. Now the Hammond itself has adjustments, so you can adjust the key weighting inside the Hammond, but that adjustment applies to both the Hammond itself and to any other keyboard that is plugged into it. So if I go to the lower keyboard, this is much more sensitive. So in fact it's really too sensitive. As much as I, I love the I love the, the weight, I love the feel of this M, M Audio keyboard is beautiful, but it's really too sensitive. And if I wound the sensitivity down, it mean that I would have to play this Hammond really heavily uh, and it would just be no good at all. So um, that is a downside of this arrangement, which theoretically could be fixed if I inserted um, a device in between the M Audio and the Hammond to remap the key velocity is theoretically possible. I might look at that one day, um, but I, I imagine a, a higher end uh, MIDI controller would you al allow you to change the the key weighting, but you'll end up paying more money, obviously. Um, this Keystation 61 Mark III does not allow you to do that. 
Obviously also, you're not gonna want the manual sitting like this. So um, initially I basically had this chopped up on some pieces of wood or you might have you know, some proper stands or whatever. So you work that out to get them where they need to be. And you can see that we're starting to build an instrument that is really, really nice instrument. We haven't actually done anything custom yet. So far, everything is off the shelf. And that gives us an instrument that is already really, really flexible, is already really three instruments in one with Hauptwerk, with the Hammond organs, and with the extra voice keyboard and all the various other instruments that are built into this Hammond. So a very uh, flexible instrument already, but wait, there's more. So if you're wanting to play a proper virtual pipe organ, then you are really going to need a swell shoe. So this controls the, the swell box within Hauptwerk. This swell shoe is a new old stock one. I can't remember what brand it is, but they all work basically the same way. Essentially, they have a little, uh, a little resistor, a potentiometer, that changes its value as the, as the pedal is pushed up and down but that has to interface into our organ somehow or other. So if you were just using a, a standard MIDI controller, then it most likely is not going to have a swell shoe input. So how do you get that into Hauptwerk? Well, you probably would need some sort of a analog to digital converter with a USB output that would connect into Hauptwerk. So you're starting to look at trying to find something off the shelf or something that is a little bit custom. Now, as you can see, I'm not using anything custom, but if you look at the screen, you can see that the swell shoe is working. Well, why is that? Well, it's very simple, and this is one of the great advantages, advantages again, of using this, um, this Hammond SK-1, is that it has, a, it has a swell shoe or an expression pedal, as it's called, input. So this controls the expression on the Hammond, but the Hammond also sends the signal that it receives on that input out via MIDI, so Hauptwerk receives that. And so Hauptwerk can be programmed to respond to this swell shoe, which is exactly what is happening. So I now have swell shoe functionality without needing any extra electronics. I've just plugged the swell shoe straight into the back of this Hammond, and it sends the signal out through to Hauptwerk. The Hammond also has a sustain pedal input, which is used for uh, keyboard, and it has a foot switch, which can be prog programmed in Hammond, uh, in, in Hauptwerk, for anything that you wanted it to be. Um, I'm primarily using it to control the, um, the Leslie turning the Leslie on and off, just doing that with my foot. But that can be configured in the Hammond as to what it does in the Hammond. And you can also configure it in Hauptwerk as well. So that's how we've taken care of, especially that swell shoe input in this particular system. Now, if one is going to have a, a proper virtual pipe organ, then you need a way of controlling the organ. It certainly isn't practical to control the organ uh, from the laptop while you're playing the organ. So there's a number of ways that can, that can be done. A very common way is people use some sort of a, a um, touch controller, USB touch controller that they sit next to a keyboard and they can press buttons on that. That can be configured to Hauptwerk presets. And that works fine. But if you're a purist like me, then you want your organ to basically work the same way that a proper pipe organ would. After all, that's what a virtual pipe organ should do, isn't it? And so that's what the console route does. But the whole point of this project was to give that functionality, give the functionality that a console would have without actually being a console. So we need a way to control our organ with the features that a console would normally have. And those are basically two things, thumb pistons and uh, stops to, to change the stops of our organ. We also need to deal with the problems of getting our keyboard sitting in the right place. 
So I've got two elements to that, and this is the first element here. This is a sled that is made out of plywood. Uh, it has kind of like little um, just feet, timber feet on the bottom of it, which is set up to give the right height to get it above the bottom manual. And as you can see, it has thumb pistons. So we've got um, two sets of divisional thumb pistons and then one set of jump, a general thumb pistons and then the mandatory set and cancel thumb piston. So these are proper thumb pistons uh, for use in an organ. I'll just turn it around so you can see the back. And yeah, they're just contact closures. So these are just wired up like so. They're wired into this ribbon cable. And you'll see that I've wired it into the, the center like so, because that means that I can run it out either this side or I can run it out of this side and I'm not gonna have any problems with cable length. So I'll just turn this back around and I'll just show you in one second how this works with setting the keyboard on it. So now you can see that we have our keyboards in position. The height is set up so that this sits above this M Audio MIDI controller and it's designed so that my Hammond sits in this sled. Obviously this could be done with uh, any keyboard, just adjust the size. And also I've got just in here, hopefully you can see that, yeah, you should be able to see that. There's a couple of uh, rubber, I can't remember what they're called, but it's like got a nail down the bottom and then it's like this rubber dome. They use them a lot in um, pianos, for piano lids and so on. So there's just a couple of those there and they space out the front of the Hammond because we've got this wiring harness down in here and we don't want it to be fouling onto this wiring harness. So there's the other one down there. So that takes care of how this all sits. Okay, so that's fine. But to make all of this MIDI stuff work, so to make these thumb pistons work, they need to be connected into something. And we also want some stops to be able to control our organ. So basically that's the next part of this organ, which I'll show you now. So this here is essentially Hauptwerk in a box or at least MIDI Boutique in a box. This has all of the electronics in it that makes all of this work. So we have uh, a stop rail here. This is actually a stop rail that came off an old Allen organ. And these are stop action magnets. And I think these were con stop action mag magnets. These came from my friend FB who refurbished these for me. And um, I only ever used this organ on the St. Anne's Mosley setting. Um, so it's, it's basically one organ. So, and I really like that organ. It's a romantic organ. So I think it's a beautiful organ. So I'm very happy just to use that one organ. So what I did is I sanded off the um, labels that were on these tabs that had come off some other organ. And then I had them re-engraved with the correct names to match the St. Anne's organ. So I've got my stop action magnets here and then inside of the box, so the lid just lifts up like this. Normally it's screwed down, but the lid just lifts up. I've got a couple of piano hinges here on the lid and then inside we have the electronics. So here at the front we have all of our stop action magnets. Gee. Let me just try to come around here so that you can see that a little bit better. There's all of our stop action magnets and this front panel is also mounted on a piano hinge as well so I can take out two screws and this whole thing will fold down if I need to access the back of these stop action magnets. And then uh, in here we have the, the actual electronics itself that 
makes this organ work. So these are MIDI boutique circuit boards. So here, this one here is the um, HWCE board. So it um, is used basically for inputs. So digital inputs, it's got four sets of digital inputs, one, two, three, four, which are row scan. I'm not using the row scan functionality, so I've got the um, expander boards. So there's just this one expander board that I'm using at the moment. And that connects to, so these ribbon cables, these three ribbon cables here connect to all of the contact closures on these stop action magnets. And this fourth one here that is empty, the thumb pistons connect to that. So that just comes through this hole here and plugs in here. And that's the, um, that's the thumb pistons. Now, this also does support some analog inputs on these headers here, I think it is. So if you needed to have like a swell shoe, which is obviously a, an analog input, then that could connect to there. But as I mentioned before, because I have the swell shoe going through the Hammond, um, I don't actually need to do that. So I've just got um, contact closures only. Then over here, this board here is, uh, this is an MDDP Darlington driver board. And uh, the breakouts come over to here. And so these ribbon cables here go to all of the solenoids. So basically that's those solenoids. There's two solenoids for every stop action magnet. So I think there's about 36 of them or so, which means there's 72 solenoids that are, are driven by this circuit board. And so one of the solenoids engages to make the stop go on and another solenoid engages to make the stop go off. So that's how all of the, the preset stuff works. Um, this runs off 12 volts. So I've got an external power supply and I've got the 12 volts just wired into um, here. There's a couple of screw terminals here. Um, there's enough room here that I could have put in a cage power supply, but that's not what I have. So that's pretty much what this is. And you can see that um, it, is, it is pretty modular. Uh, so my friend FB helps me to make this up very much. Thank you so much to FB. And here he is in the process of making this thing up. He also made for me this little cover. The idea is, is that this little cover will actually uh, fit over these um, sands. I just need to put some felt on there. I haven't done that yet, but just put a little bit of felt on here so that it's not wood on wood. Uh, then I can just sort of like strap this on. So it basically means if I ever want to move this thing, I can just take it all apart, wrap a blanket around this, and off I go, rather than having to worry about uh, a gigantic, humongous console that I can't carry on my own, that I need to get people to help me carry with. So that's, that's the idea of this modular virtual pipe organ. So the idea is that the stop rail basically sits back here. Uh, it could sit anywhere, obviously, but it's a little bit more convenient if it's in front of one. So I just um, made up out of sort of scrap bits of wood that I had lying around this kind of um, base, which it could be better than it is, could be a bit more rugged, but I ran out of material. So um, this is sort of what I made up and the stop rail 
just sits on top of this. Okay, so here we are with our stop rail set up and we've got everything hooked up now. So this is the ribbon cable that goes off to the thumb piston. This is um, ground wire for the thumb pistons and there was actually one more contact closure than would fit um, in one ribbon. So that's this green wire here which actually goes off to one of the spares that was for the contact closures for the stop. So it go, runs into one of these bundles here. Um, so that's all of that taken care of and then we have our MIDI. Just because of the way the MIDI architecture is in this thing I've actually got three MIDI cables coming out of this which is a little bit counterintuitive but you think about the way the architecture is it makes perfect sense. Um, so the furthest upstream is actually this MIDI controller. So each MIDI out goes to the MIDI in of the Hammond but we also need to get the MIDI signals from this. So the MIDI out of the Hammond has to go to the MIDI in of the HWCE board and then the MIDI out of the HWCE board goes into our Focusrite MIDI controller. Um, so that's that direction of flow for MIDI. And then the MIDI out of our Focusrite board it goes to our MDTP board, which controls all of our solenoids for our stop action magnets. So that's how the, the MIDI architecture works. This is our 12 volt connection, which goes off to this little uh, external power supply that I have here. So the lid just folds down like so, and a couple of screws in the lid. Okay, so everything's all back together and it all even seems to work, which is a bonus. So I also have a monitor sitting on top of this nice platform. I use it mainly for playing music. I don't need to use the screen for controlling the organ, which is the whole point, as I said before, of this organ. So you can see here that we do indeed truly have what is a modular virtual pipe organ. It has all of the normal features that a proper pipe organ would have by way of thumb pistons, fully functional stop rail, plus also having the magic of this wonderful Hammond SK-1 stage piano. We have a swell shoe, we have a foot switch, we have a sustain pedal, and when I get around to it, it will also have a pedal board as well. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video on how I built a modular virtual pipe organ. Maybe it might give you some ideas. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you on other videos on my channel. Thanks and bye for now.